Hey, welcome back to Neckbeardia. It's me, Garbro again, coming to you with a interesting video. Uh, let's get into it. I'm making this thread because it's come to my attention that for most of you in this generation, everything you know about being a game master is wrong. Now this is not entirely your fault, as you've been largely misled. It's been a case of the blind leading the blind for a good while now. To start with, let me impress upon you the most basic of facts. The nicest guy at the table should not be the one who is acting as Game Master. Game Mastering is a not, as nearly as every source available to you will say, a matter of keeping the players happy. Any Game Master who strives to do this will certainly fail. This is the sort of maternal approach to role-playing games where the players are spoiled children and the Game Master is simply their overly permissive mother. Scurrying about here and there, cleaning up all their messes and making sure all their meals are prepared lovingly ahead of time. This is no way to run a role-playing game and no player actually wants or expects this despite whatever they may say. The real Game Master personality is, as I said, not that of a nice guy. Of course, you may be perfectly friendly, but you must be quick, clever, and most importantly, cruel. Game Mastering is first and foremost a means of manipulating other people, emotionally and psychologically. No one is coming to the table simply to have all their desires fed to them slowly over the course of an adventure. In order to actually trigger that crass dopamine release, by which people mean the sensation of being rewarded, they actually have to be challenged in order to earn the reward, and this means they also have to be regularly denied the reward as well. You know, for someone trying to sound so fucking smart, you had an entire sentence there, one huge run-on sentence with one fucking comma. God damn it. Just like dogs, if they become accustomed to being rewarded without doing anything, they will simply stop trying, i.e. cease to play the game. To put it another way, being a game master has very little to do with being a mother and much more with being a real bitch. Therefore, instead of thinking about how to keep your players happy, you should instead endeavor to make them as miserable as humanly possible while also keeping them engaged. This is something of an unteachable art, but it basically boils down to this. You need to engineer the suffering of the players in such a way that the blame does not come directly back to you, the Game Master. The general axiom should be hold rewards and give responsibilities while appearing to do the opposite. That is to give rewards and show the responsibilities yourself. In effect, you must stress how doing such and such is a burden to yourself, but you would gladly do so to keep your players happy. In reality, however, you must leave them utterly convinced that every misfortune or shortcoming is either bad luck, a tough break, but those are the rules, or all that failing, their own damn fault. Bad luck is of course your great friend in this endeavor. You may give the players something perfectly easy to accomplish and they could simply fail due to a bad dice roll. This is a cause for celebration to the Game Master. You have just received a freebie. Bad luck, however, cannot account for everything, nor can you simply give the players consistently unfair odds and expect them not to catch on. This is going to come as a disappointment to many, I know, but there is no way around it. To be a good Game Master, you must have a Master Level comprehension of the rules of the game, or at least Master Level in comparison to that of your players. Quick aside, I don't really agree here with that particular uh, point he's trying to make. You don't need a Master Level comprehension of the rules. The biggest part is knowing the rules you need to know and having access to the rulebook if things should such arise. The most important thing is simply being able to tell a fucking story. You'd be shocked on how many DMs know every rule you can think of, every single sidebar they have an answer to, but they fucking suck at telling a story. Nah. Nah. To be a good game master, you must know the rules you need to know and be able to tell a story. If you lack, don't, you, you'd be the best GM rule wise that anyone's ever seen, but if you can't tell a story, no one's going to want to play with you. It's a simple fact. Only by knowing the rules better can you put the players in situations that appear at face value to be favorable, but are in fact unfavorable. A game master who foregoes this requirement and tries to fudge the rules that is knowingly lie about them will eventually run afoul himself later in trying to keep his lies straight. 
You don't have to lie. You just change the you just change the NPCs or change the monsters. You're the fucking game master, not the game associate, not not the not, 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 not the game assistant. You're the game master. You can change shit. Don't lie. Just change it. Before this occurs, there is a good chance of the players finding out themselves. Despite what you may have read, rules to the effect of no rules lowering are de facto anti-rules. You should be able to sense how desperately impotent such rules are by intuition. There is no situation where rules layering can be absolutely pro rules lawyering can be absolutely prohibited. There is only the case that rules lawyering may in fact happen at any time. If you are afraid of rules lowering players and need to transparently desperate Desperate? Transparently desperate? A rule as no rules lowering please, then you are not cut out for being a game master. While you wear the crown of a game master, you are simultaneously wearing the belt of chief rules lawyer, heavy though it may be. Anyone who dares to wear the crown must wear also wear the belt and must Anyone who dares to wear the crown must wear also wear the belt and must be ch prepared to defend both in the event of a challenger coming forward. Again, I just don't agree. I've been game mastering for a long fucking time, and I'll tell I'll, I'll tell rules lawyers no, <laughs> just straight up no. You're wrong. That's not how I'm doing it. Like I get the fact that they're if you're playing purely by the D and D book, sure, but what DM or game master plays purely by the rule book? I, I'm the kind of guy who goes, the, the rule book's more like guidelines and actual rules. And as a g game master, you you can fucking tell them no. Like, nah, I'm not allowing that. By all means, have a reason why I'm not going to allow it, but you can tell folks no. Like, fuck you, you're not doing that. <laughs> but what about when bad luck and rules mastery aren't enough? Then you must manipulate. To manipulate your players, you must know them. You need to know their weaknesses, their fears, their breaking points. To be a good game master, you should be bringing each player close to their breaking point each and every session. No, you, d you don't want to do this. You will stress out your players and make them not want to play. There should be peak times, the crest, where you bring them to your breaking point, but not every session. If you're bringing your players to their breaking point every session, you're going to wear your fucking players out and they're not going to want to play. If they... They sh if they get anxiety every time they come to the gaming table, you're not doing a good job. All you're doing is stressing them out. In this endeavor, it is wise to note the expression, it is always darkest before the dawn and you should not take it lightly. Truthfully, a player can only really greatly- the fuck? Truthfully, a player can only really be greatly pained when victory is within their reach. Their tolerance for frustration will be close to zero when the reward or objective is anywhere but in their immediate grasping. Also, you must be prepared to be cruel and to tear even this away at the last minute, to affect the occasional yet all too frequent letdown, to render all their suffering moot. Of course, how can you do this without taking the heat? How to avoid players quitting in a rage? The answer is to channel blame into a specific player or perhaps a subsection of the players. Doing so achieves two important things. First, it establishes a reason for the failure, which is a very important thing to have. Without a reason for the failure, there is no reason to think the same challenge can be overcome at a later date. The players will become despondent and likely quit the game. If there is a reason for the failure, however, then there is room for the thought, oh, if only I do such and such differently, I will succeed for certain next time. Secondly, channeling blame into a player itself achieves two important goals. One, it deflects the blame from you, the game master. Two, it increases group cohesion. <laughs> When the entire group suffers because of the action of a single player, it creates natural pressure within the group to increase cooperation and reduce selfish slash deviant actions. No, it just pisses off the, the one singular player. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no one wants to be that guy who caused the group to suffer. Of course, to achieve this, yet more mitigation strategies must be put into use to prevent the one player from being overly singled out. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> but but here's the issue. You're playing a dice game. You If you try and follow this, this, this path of reasoning, if that one player has a bad dice roll, then everyone's going to be fucking mad at him and you're going put the, to the, put the blame on him? Come on now. A single player can have the best well-laid strategy he can think of, but with one bad dice roll, he's suddenly the pariah of the group who <laughs> gets to be singled out. 
that's not how that works at all. If you follow this line of thought, all right, and you try to deflect blame from you onto the players, you're, you're just being an asshole at that point. Because, say a player has a well play, has a well laid plan, it's a bit risky as all things are in D&D, &D, but he gets a bad roll, then suddenly he's the bad guy, he's the group pariah, he's the one that all the blame gets shifted onto. That's not how that works. Plus, this whole uh, group um, punishment thing never works. I was in the army, I know, it never works. Human reaction first to an issue is to cause aggression towards it, not compassion. Ugh. Like, you got a group of people, and one guy messes up. Nine times out of ten, they're gonna look at the other guy angrily, or yell at him, or like go, Dude, really? Not to go, Aw, oh, sorry, bud, maybe next time. No, they're gonna be mad at the dude for, for doing the bad thing, and it's not even his fault the bad thing happened. This, this, this passage right here is a great way to destroy a gaming group by doing this shit. This guy, don't ever do this. Yeah, a little bit, sure. Slightly stuff on, on, on like mundane things, but don't make this the way you think. You're gonna piss off every person in your fucking group, and they're gonna blame you anyway. My preferred way of doing this, though there are many, is to seem to favor that player with the spotlight before the fall. This has the effect of both cushioning the fall because it balances against the previous apparent favoritism and also because the other players will accept it uncritically. Either they will be somewhat jealous of the spotlight hog and thus happy that the other player has had a reversal of fortune, or they will think of it more abstractly as a sort of karmic rebalancing, rather than an artificially engineered situation created by yours truly. It is wise in these cases to remember the adage, keep your friends close with your enemies closer. Shower the scapegoat with attention in minor prizes and it will be easier to heap blame onto them later. What the fuck is this? Who wrote this? <laughs> what asshole wrote this? But finally, how do you engineer such a situation where blame can be channeled to a player in the first place? Again, we have several options. Bad luck is of course always on your side and will be always keep a and will always keep a player motivated because they can of course hope to roll better next time. The rules should also be on your side. Pit the player against an unknown foe or set them in some unfamiliar encounter. Use their inexperience against them. Let them overestimate their chances. Let them blame the brave one who assured them it would be alright rather than you. Finally, however, you must know your players well enough to set specific traps for them. By which, of course, I do not mean literal traps, they so may use those as well. Oh. In this regard, we do well to remember the adage, when one favors the hammer, all problems begin to seem like nails. By the end of the first session, a clever game master should have a good idea of what every player's hammer is. If you don't, then I suggest using more repetitive encounters. Repetitive encounters, so long as they are not overly repetitive, are excellent because they allow the group to refine its tactics scientifically building their confidence incrementally, all the while allowing you to create a sort of hypnotic rhythm which you can break at a later point for effect. Just before the players reach their much desired objective, make it seem nearly within their grasp, then throw one or more pedestrian encounter before them, the same thing they have become accustomed to doing. Give them the impression there is just this one more thing to do before they can claim their rewards, then pick a player, probably the spotlighted one, and exploit their hammer. Does the magic user always throw a fireball? Oh no, actually I'm afraid to say, I'm so sorry, that fireball also destroyed the objective. It was a great and mighty reward, but now, well, it's just melting before your eyes into a pool of useless scrap. Give them fair warning, of course. If they ask, will my fireball destroy the treasure, you must certainly tell them yes. Your goose has been cooked for you at this point, you are not clever enough and you must admit defeat. The idea is to exploit their greed and their impatience and their overconfidence so that they don't think to ask if their fireball will destroy the treasure. They just cast it away. And then of course there is a trite example. You need to find new hammers and new ways of exploiting them in the future, which again is a reason why there is no formula for being a good game master. You must be clever, you must be quick, and you must be cruel. Of course you must also be able to talk to your group. There are simply a large numbers of things that I would not consider appropriate to be discussed in a mixed company, especially hammers that are not well known, examples such as casting fireball recklessly. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see 
what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> and like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking, so once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. Did James set me up giving me this? Good lord, man. All right, so this is Guard Bros thoughts. If you don't like this, turn the video off here and I'll give a damn. But I don't agree with nearly anything on here. I mean, yeah, you gotta be cruel, but you can't be this kind of cruel. You can't cast the cruelty or the, you know, the, 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 the blame on, onto your players or make it seem, you can't pick a player and make them the scapegoat. That's a, that's a horrible thing to fucking do. The scapegoating or the issue must come organically. You can't plan ahead to have some dude be the scapegoat. It's got to happen naturally. Like for an encounter with me, if someone does something wrong, I don't plan ahead for my players to be scapegoats. I would never do that. That, that you, can't, <laughs> you can't plan that ahead. If it does happen, it has to happen organically. And you can't be overly cruel. The way the guy wrote this, it's it's going to put some DMs on a, on a path to over overbearing cruelty. And if you do that, you're going to burn your players out. It has to be fun. The, the 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 game has to be fun. Players have to enjoy themselves, and you have to do it. So even when they fail, even when things are cruel, they have to still enjoy themselves. And the one thing you can't do is try to inorganically cast this blame or cause strife in the party. If things do happen, the players have to do it. The players have to cause the strife. You don't, you can't plan ahead to make certain players like the, like the like the the main item for for all their ire. You you can't do that. It's it's not how it works. And it, it, with the all skeleton party in, 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 in my current party and the people I write encounters for, things will be bad. Bad things will happen. And I do plan ahead for the bad things. Yes, but I don't place blame any of the players or NPCs for the bad things. I, I chalk it up as the either bad luck or they simply went with the wrong option. But I'll never cast a blame on the player. It's it, that, That's such a wild thing to do. And, like, setting them up for... Fi the one thing you can do sometimes is set them up for failure, but don't do it on such a hard... Don't put their, 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 their prize, their objective, in a precarious position to where they, they can destroy it. I mean... Realism is good in 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 D and D, yeah, but don't do it in such a fucking asshole way, and don't channel blame into the player. Ah, Jesus, I I I I I have nothing to agree with with this. This was an awful write up. <laughs> in my in my opinion, this is an awful write up. This is made by that GM. This is a that GM write up, and I don't like it. No. Two out of ten would not read again. This is shit. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for coming by, Neckbeardia. If you like this video and others like them, be sure to like and subscribe to Neckbeardia and click the bell icon so you know the videos are released through the week. Additionally, if you like original stories written through the week, stop by Guardbeardia, join Neckbeardia's Discord, join my Discord. I'm angry. I'm going to go off and make some tea. Until I see you next time on this side of the veil, this has been Guard Bro. This is Neckbeardia, and fuck the guy who wrote this. <laughs>